Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for Ask the Expert North Texas. I'm Kristen Diaz. I'm David Rankin. There's been a sharp increase in the number of Hyundais and Kias that are getting ripped off over the last couple of years. It seems TikTok is teaching amateur car thieves how to steal them through an issue in their security. Now, this just leads to a bunch of questions about car thefts in 2023. On today's Ask the Expert, we are joined by Dr. Alex Del Carmen. He's a criminology professor at Tarleton State, and he is in the KRLD Zoom room. Dr. Del Carmen, always a pleasure. Thank you. So it's great to see you guys. So what is it about Hyundais and Kias that are so popular now? Well, you know, it's, it's more than, than just the model of the car. I would argue that it's the technology that people have in front of them now, right? So, so now you can actually teach somebody remotely how to steal a car and how to get away with it and how to hide it and all kinds of stuff. So, so look, th these two types of, of vehicles or these models out there have become uh, vulnerables because somebody figured out a way to be able to wire into them and, and get them to go without a key. But I would argue that it's not the model or make of the vehicle as much as it is the fact that we're all vulnerable because people are learning. They're learning how to commit crimes on, the so on social media. Yeah, and that's one of those things that I think has gotten pretty bold that people are creating TikTok videos about. This is new stuff you people used to like, you know, Google incognito. How do you do something mischievous? Fill in the blank. And uh, it just seems like nobody really cares, you know, whether or not this information is put out or not. That's exactly right. And I think we, <laughs> they, they, even criminals have lost their shame, you know, in the sense that that they just simply don't care. They, they even see it as a, almost like a crusade, Kristen, in the sense that they want to leave their signature online by being able to show people how to do this. And by the way, quote me on that, would you? Make sure that you use that TikTok line to, because they want to be infamous. They want people to say such and such uh, individual on TikTok showed me how to do this. And of course, they're probably in a foreign country, you know, 3,000 miles away from the United States outside of our jurisdiction. But they are they are definitely wanting to leave a sign behind their legacy that they themselves were responsible for X numbers of thefts of vehicles in the United States. What does it say to the people that are on the TikTok that have decided, hey, maybe car theft isn't such a bad thing? TikTok never shows you people being sentenced for a crime, and it certainly never shows you people serving time. Right. And so so the the sad part of the story is they only show you, you know, the, the the front end of the of the criminal justice system, which is, you know, somebody committing a crime. But but what they fail to show you is that many of these criminals are apprehended. Many of them are prosecuted. And almost all of them end up in prison at some point. And, you know, I think that if we were to show people you know, maybe have a, one of those shows where you have a real life experience of an inmate for three days uh, to, yeah. to know what they're deprived of and, and how, you know, the circumstances in prison are less than ideal. Maybe people would have a second thought about doing this thrill seeking stuff that they watch on TikTok. It's kind of like that show that came out, you know, like back in the 90s, Scared Straight, you know, where they would get all these, you know, people who thought they were bad to the bone and 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 stick them in this uh, reality type show uh, but that is 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 so true um Dr. Del Carmen I mean when, the other thing is is that I think also you we talk about technology in a way of uh, broadcasting but even technology in the way of um you know hot wiring a car used to be you know you you did it physically right but now I I know someone who works at a car dealership who who has told me about people just not even touching the car. They just swipe near the remote and they're able to pick up the signal and they don't even have to put their, their hands on the vehicle. Somebody else gets inside and drives it off. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, you know, what you're going to see in the future, Kristen, with all these electric cars coming out and, and our dependency on technology even more, uh, it's going to be that the next you know generation of car thieves are going to be sitting down uh, in front of their computers and stealing uh, remotely vehicles that can be self-driven, that can go to a certain place, make a certain deal, and they themselves will never show you know, their face uh, even close to the proximity of where the car theft is taking place. We are dealing with a criminal that is fancier, more sophisticated, uh, that has less shame than they ever did before, and that now has a sense of glorifying themselves through social media to the extent that they make their name through the criminal acts that they profess they have committed online. 
and they tend to try to copy what they see. Say, for example, one of the most lucrative movie franchises around is the Fast and Furious franchise. And that just seems to, again, glamorize the whole concept of car theft. No question. And you may remember the day, David, when we started seeing these, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto, you know, video games that started coming out and some people showing how concerned they were that they were inspiring young people to commit crimes. Look, now that is something of the past. I and mean, we, we look at that as the way you and I would look at the Flintstones, you know, in the sense that, boy, that's just all stuff, you know. And so nowadays they want to see stuff on 3D. They've got these video games that are, are virtual reality based that you almost feel like you're actually in the moment at that point. And so, so there is a very little distinction between that fantasy, what they can do online and what they can do in person. And that really concerns me. I've been a criminologist, as both of you know, for 25 years, and I'm worried about this next stage that we're going into because I don't think law enforcement is ready for that. Uh, my last question to you is just like, okay, so these criminals get caught. Is the law or our law enforcement or even defense attorneys, is there, um, how does that evolve with either defending a criminal? Or are they getting, you know, tougher on how to actually defend a criminal? Is that getting harder to beat? Or is it all the same? A criminal is a criminal and it doesn't matter how you did it. We can beat you regardless because the law is up by our side. Yeah, I wish it was the latter, Kristen, but we've always seen that the law always follows technology. Technology always goes first. You know, by the time the law catches up, uh, technology is out. It's been used repetitively, and they're now thinking of a new form of, of, of criminal activity. So I would argue that the crimes are going to be punished. I mean, there's no question. And that we, the, the criminal code is going to in, expand to include some of these digital crimes. But unfortunately, the pace in which it's doing that is very slow versus the technology that's coming out today. We talk about TikTok videos. How much responsibility do social media companies have to prevent these kinds of videos from showing up on their platforms? It's significant responsibility, David, but we live in a country that, that adheres to the notion, and I don't disagree with it, by the way, that the First Amendment is an important component. That's why, that's why we call it the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, which is essentially the freedom of speech. And so that freedom of speech has extended in ways that I think most of us that are in the criminal justice system working to make society a better place kind of scratch our heads sometimes and wonder if the founding fathers ever had this in mind. Nevertheless, you know, the, the, the idea of having that freedom of speech oftentimes, you know, supersedes the responsibility that some of these entities may have as it relates to, you know, the, the propagation or the distribution of these videos for the world to see. Dr. Alex Del Carmen from Tarleton State, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for having me.